Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. A point yesterday at the King Power Leicester 2 match time 2 usually would be a good point, but I don't know if I can call it that. I think I'll call it an alright point. Not the worst result in the world, not the best result in the world. It was okay, weren't it? Um, it's not the Leicester that we've seen in the last couple of seasons. Going into the weekend, they're sitting 12th in the Premier League. I think it showed in the first half of the King Power. They weren't very good, were they? thought we looked quite comfortable. thought we were looking okay. I don't think we were great. But Leicester were that poor in the first half. I thought it was quite straightforward for us. It was 1-1 at halftime, of course, due to Aaron Creswell. But I was quite comfortable. So to get a draw late on, usually you sort of... You come away celebrating, don't you? Well, hey, you got that last minute equaliser, get in. And the people at the game might have done that because they're there, they're invested a little bit more with the emotions and the atmosphere. But me, sat on my couch watching the game, armchair fan and all that, um, I wasn't that... I was happy we got the point, of course, but there was no cartwheels or big celebrations for me because I felt like we got away with it a little bit. And that was a sort of a good team with having a bad game. But the problem is we're saying that more and more often right now. If it was a one-off, it was a bad day at the office, you draw a line under it, you would move on. But it's not that, is it? We've not, we've not been playing great for quite a while now. And some people say that that's the signs of a good team. Possibly it is. But I would argue that signs that something's not working. If you consistently have a, a bad game but get something, okay, good team, yeah, maybe. But that's also a suggestion it's not quite working and you're getting away with it to some extent. And eventually it's, you're going to get caught up. You're going to get found out eventually. And I think we have been sussed out to some extent. Rodgers told us before the game, he knows what West Ham are going to do. He knows how West Ham's going to play. I think it showed in part, in patches during the game. I think it showed Harry Barnes dominating Soufal until Soufal went off the pitch. That's not fluke. That is Leicester knowing to get the ball to Harvey Barnes consistently. Get over that side of the pitch. He's got him on toast. Keep on feeding Harvey Barnes. Went off the pitch. Brilliant. It stopped. When Sufal went off the pitch, the attack stopped down that hand side. And it wasn't because Ryan Fredericks came on and started playing like a master, like Cafu or anything. He didn't. He came on and he did okay, Ryan Fredericks. But the, the con consistent attacks down the left hand side stopped all of a sudden because that was their game plan. They knew what to do. They sussed us out a little bit. So these are warning signs, I think. When you play poorly and you get away with it, it's a bit of a warning sign. Now, this is a bit of a negative video. I'm aware of that, but I'm a bit frustrated, a bit concerned. And I was frustrated yesterday because it's hard not to sit there. I know people say, get over the transfer window. I can't. I can accept it's close. I'm aware we can't do anything now unless we bring in a freebie. And I'm not particularly keen on that, to be honest with you. But get over it. No, I can't do that. Because I sat there yesterday watching Antonio struggling up front. Thinking, oh, can we not change this? I sat there yesterday watching Creswell having a poor game. Thinking, well, oh, maybe we've got a left back in January transfer window. So it is difficult. Difficult to get over it. I don't mind admitting that. But anyway, Moyes needs to stop picking his favourites. That's the point of this video. There's three players in particular. It's Moyes' favourites. His trusted ones. I don't mind Moyes trusting certain players. Because Moyes has got a start in nine. Doesn't he? I think there's a couple of places up for grabs in the team. This sort of left wing role, the attack and midfield position. That's it. We know who the keeper is going to be. We know what the back four is going to be when everyone's fit. We know the centre midfield pairing, the striker. We know Bowen's going to play. There's only two places up for grabs in this West Ham team. And you've almost got to do something really bad to get hooked by Moyes. Now, like I said, when they're all performing, that's not a bad thing. We all know what Klopp's team is. We all know who's going to be centre-back for Liverpool and left-back and right-back. The difference is they perform consistently at a very high performance level. Consistently. We're not really doing that at the minute. Some players are. Bowen is. Bowen's doing that consistently. Declan Rice has been. A couple of poor games from Declan recently, but he previously has been. Fabianski has been as well. But there's some players been poor for quite a while now and they're still getting selected one or two I understand why Moyes is selecting them but then you go back to the January transfer window and think well you could have rectified it there you could have done something which meant you didn't have to keep playing the same players even though they're out of form but because we've not done anything you sort of have to play them through the default so there's one player I just don't get why he started him yesterday and he cannot start against Newcastle Vladimir Sufal. Now I'm going to talk about Suchek in a minute. Before I do, just want to point in the direction of the One Football app. This video is sponsored by the One Football app. You can get it downloaded to your device by clicking the link in the description or the pinned comments. It's completely free. Completely free app. It takes about a minute to download it, depending on your varying internet speeds at home. Then when you download it, ask for your favourite teams, ask for the competitions you wish to follow as well. And then when you've done that, click on favourites. You can click on your team's emblem and it gives you all the news for your team. So for West Ham at the minute will be 
having different stuff about the Leicester game that's gone on and ending about Gordon Kurzuma, unfortunately. Then you can click on the Premier League, get all the big headlines for the Premier League as well as the scores, the league tables. You can see Wolves creeping up on last time. You can see what's happening down the bottom of the table because it looked like it was going to be a good relegation battle. Then it looked like Newcastle was going to make it look easy. And now Keenan Trippier is injured, so all of a sudden, relegation battles back on. Anyway, keep up to it all, with it all with the One Football app. Link in description. Now, Thomas Suchek. Four months ago, I don't know how long, it was over four months, I searched on YouTube. And four months ago, I did a video at the start of the season. We'd just been beaten by Brentford, I recall it. And I did a video saying the Rice and Suchek partnership wasn't working. Now, some people agreed with me, said, yep, yeah, I'm a bit worried about this too. Other people said, pipe down, you know nothing, leave. Don't blame them. Um, I agree with them some days. However, I think I've got this one right. And there was, but there was also some people that disagree with me. Said it's too early to be worried about this. They've had one bad game. Now that was their opinion. Their opinion was Suchek had one bad game against Brentford. My opinion was Suchek had a poor start to the season. Period. He wasn't playing very well in numerous games. And the partnership wasn't working. It was one of the biggest highlights of last season. Suchek and Rice was an absolute joy to watch. One of the best midfield partnerships in the Premier League. A big reason why we finished sixth in the Premier League as well. And the partnership's just gone downhill this year. It's not a disaster, but it's just not as good as last season. Which, like I admit, it was high standards. They set the bar very high. But Declan Rice has got better. Declan Rice this season is better than Declan Rice last season. He, he's improved. But the partnership hasn't. Now we've all got our varying reasons as to why Suchek isn't quite working. And they may differ. But I think the majority would agree. It's down to the fact that Declan Rice has got a new role. And if you want evidence for that this season. What's Suchek's best game this season? Watford away. It just is, isn't it? You might have an opinion as to what Jared Bowen's best game this season is. Or Craig Dawson's best game. And it'll alter between West Ham fans. But if I asked you all what Thomas Suchek's best game this season is. I think we'd all pick the same one. Watford away. What was different? Declan Rice was on the pitch. So now you've got evidence to support the fact that it is the partnership that isn't quite working. Yesterday was just another game where the game completely bypassed him. He completely bypassed Suchek. And like I said, I don't think Declan Rice was great yesterday either. I think he was poor in the last couple of games, Declan. But the difference is we know Declan Rice will get better. Newcastle, I expect him to be man of match for West Ham. Wolves in a couple of weeks' time. I expect Declan Rice to be man of match for West Ham. I just do. I expect Declan and Jared to be two of our top three man of match candidates in every single game. And Suchek used to be. Not so much this season. Now, the reason I bring it up is because Moyes, that was four months ago, Moyes himself said Suchek wasn't playing very well. He basically said, I can't remember it, but to quote him directly. But a brief quote was... Suchek's not at his best. Is that because of Declan Rice? Don't know. We'll have a look at it and try and get him back to his best. What have we done since then? Nothing. We've just left it. We've just kicked the can down the road with the Suchek and Rice thing and just hoped it would fix itself or something. And it's not. And yesterday was another game where I thought Telemans was the best midfielder on the pitch yesterday. I, I thought he ran the game for Leicester and he's not even been having that great a season by his high standards. He's got his contract dispute going on with Leicester at the minute as well. But I thought he gave them a bit of a footballing lesson. Uh, I thought he was putting the tackles in. I thought he was moving the ball about really well. And Suchek's... I've always felt Suchek's quite limited in possession with the ball at his feet. There's enough evidence of archive videos that we do in Hammers Chat where I've said that consistently. And that's the thing that stops Suchek playing for a Champions League club, perhaps. is On the ball, he's just... He's limited. In the air, unbelievable. Defensively, out of possession, I think he's really, really good. I think he's a good player to have. Box to box, gets about really well. His work ethic's fantastic. Everything about him I like, bar him being limited on the ball. And that's not an issue, as long as other players do that side of the job. It's not a problem. But games like yesterday, where Fernals are struggling, Lanzini's struggling, Antonio's struggling, the emphasis becomes on the centre midfielders a little bit. Well, you need to get us going again. And Suchet just couldn't do that. Now, the problem is we don't really know how to fix it because clearly we don't trust Alex Crowell. We know Moyes won't play him. And after what we saw against Kidderminster Aviers, I don't really blame him either. So we're just going to have to go along with Vice and Suchek in the middle of the park and hope it sorts itself out. We don't really have any other option because we didn't do anything in January. But Soufal, that's a different thing altogether. Okay, And this is one of my biggest frustrations. He shouldn't have started yesterday. He just shouldn't have. Okay. 
I don't understand why he was played. Because A, he's been out of form for a while now. He's had a pretty poor season. Signed his, um, hasn't signed his new deal. Wanted a new deal, but didn't get one, I think. I could be wrong. Anyway, but going back a few games. So against Watford, wasn't great, was he? Kamada exposed him. Dennis had a run at him a few times as well. He didn't have the best game against Watford. The Premier League game before that, and we're all the way back to the middle of January here, was at Old Trafford. He got hooked. Rashford, come on, he got hooked. Was it because he was playing poorly? Was it so that Fredericks could match Rashford's pace? Unsure, but he got taken off. The game before that, Leeds, wasn't great in that either. So he's been bang out of form for a while. And Ben Johnson's done nothing wrong. He's done nothing wrong. He covered Sufal's injury, was good. And then Sufal come back, Creswell was out, so he went over to the left back. Johnson played well. Was he, listen, was he as good as Alan Creswell on his day? No. Was he as good as Sufal last season? No, but I tell you what, he's better than Sufal this season. He should have started against Leicester. He, he should have started against Watford as well. But anyway, in regards to yesterday's game, there's no reason Sufal began that game. None. He got taken off a bit late. Um, I think he was struggling long before that. I would have had him off at half time. But lo and behold, he stayed on. He got absolutely roasted by Harvey Barnes continuously. And then Fredericks come on and sorted it. But the difference is with Suchek and Sufal is you can go to Suchek and you can make an argument as to why it's not working for Suchek. And a lot of it is that the hands of the manager, because of Declan Rice's new role, say, well, you've switched them up a little bit and Suchek suffering. Sufal, I don't feel there's any excuses here. We're not playing any differently as to why he should struggle a bit more. He's got one of the hardest working right wingers in the league ahead of him in Jared Bowen. He's got plenty of protection from the centre midfield with Rice and Suchek. Because like I said, while I... I think they've been quite poor and stuff. In terms of out of possession, protecting the back four, I think they're okay. I think we tend to get harmed down the side of the pitch a bit more than through the middle. So there's no reason for Sufal to be struggling. He's got good conditions, if you like, on the pitch to do well. It's just not working for him. It's Sebastian Schemmel, I I Carl Jenkinson, I I isn't it? One good season, the next season is rubbish. Um, we're seeing a little bit of that, but this is where Moyes has to stop his favourites thing, get him out of the team, and get Johnson in there. Just drop him, drop Sufal. It doesn't matter if you don't want to do it. He's out of form. He deserves to be dropped. And the last player is Antonio. I'm going to talk about because I feel sorry for him. I do. I feel sorry for Antonio. I have got no anger towards him. None. I used to. I used to watch games and think, come on, mate, do a bit better, do a bit more than that. Um, though I, that's a lie. There was one moment of anger towards Antonio yesterday when he took another flipping long throw. Can we stop this? Can we stop? Two things need to be banned. One, short corners. None of them. Banned. Two, Antonio taking long throws. Banned. That's the second time from my memory now I've had to watch him take his gloves off I, I, he's probably done it other times but the, the, the one that's burned in my head was at the Etihad because you were stood there in the snow watching the game there wasn't much to cheer about goal down Antonio went over to take the throw he took his gloves off slow-mo like in a movie gloves came off ball under t-shirt rubbing his rubbing the ball not his balls rubbing the ball getting it dry big build up centre backs up come on Dawson Zuma I think that's who the centre backs at the Etihad were up you come lads so they come up and trunching through the snow into the ATR. And he threw it at City's player. I think it was Bernardo Silva. And they, they went on the counter-attack. It happened again yesterday. Everyone in the box. Come on. Everyone up. Come on. In the box. Up they go. Whack. I think it hit Dewsbury Hall. Bang. Bang. Leicester on the counter-attack. Nice one, Mikhail. No more long throws. But anyway, apart from that moment of anger towards him, I just feel sorry for him because... He needs taken out the team. He needs taken off the pitch. But we can't... The January transfer window. The January transfer window. He told us. Mikhail Antonio told us. I need someone. I, I need someone to push me. He basically said, I'm getting a bit complacent here. He is. And so he should get... Well, I don't want him to. I can understand why he is. We've got no other geezer to replace him. But the reason I feel sorry for him... We've been playing him continuously for pff, two years now, maybe. Um, we're probably burning him out. You know, he's probably knackered up front. He works hard. I still think he works hard. I don't have any questions about about any of the people in the team, by the way. While we're not playing well, I think our attitude, our work ethic is still bang on. And I'm almost taking that for granted, probably. So I don't have any problems regarding Antonio's commitment or anything. It's just not working for him. Now, the service yesterday was poor. 
to Antonio. Antonio needs the fullbacks to provide crosses. He does. We know what Antonio's like. He loves getting a cross in the box and attacking it in there. And a large part of that comes from Creswell and Soufal. And when they're playing as bad as they were yesterday, not getting forward, the service is going to be limited for Antonio. But he's not not quite doing enough for me. He needs to do a little bit more. But I don't blame him. This is where I sort of look at the manager and say, come on, mate, look, he's struggling. Get him off the pitch. Leave him out for a game or two. Help him. Give him a bit of a rest. It can't be easy playing week in, week out, especially when you've got hamstrings that are sort of sellotaped together. It's not good conditions. I'm speaking about Soufal having really good conditions. All right, but Antonio's conditions up front ain't that great. You know, uh, Fernal's out of form. Lanzini wasn't great yesterday. Didn't get the ball very much. He's working his arse off for 93 minutes or whatever. And he just needs taking off. He needs a rest. And there's this re- reluctance. And I know people have said, well, get someone better than Antonio. And I always say there's someone in between Antonio and Yarmolenko we could have bought. But I'm going to change my argument here, which is there's no problem buying a journeyman, right? I hate I hate the idea of it as well. Trust me, I do. No, if we always want to see us West Ham invest in young players with potential that can get better at West Ham. We can sell them for a profit. It's a lovely world, isn't it? It's dreamland transfer business, but we don't live in one of them. Now and again, you need to get somebody in who is a little bit past it, but he's still got something to offer. The prime examples, Giroud went to Chelsea from Arsenal. Um, he did a job for a couple of seasons. He's at Milan, still doing the business. Thiago Silva went to Chelsea. He's no spring chicken. Cavani, Man United, no spring chicken. Cavani is the prime example. Cavani's what Antonio is here. He's at Man United right now. I think he's 34 years old. He can only play one game a week. He basically picks when he's going to play because he looks after himself and he basically says, I can, I'll play this game. Right, I can't play the next one. I'm not good. I need a rest. I'm getting on. I need to look after myself. You need to leave me out so I can get get back to fitness and I can go again for the next match so Cavani's only basically playing one game a week at Man United so that he can play one game a week do you know what I mean we've got Antonio who I think he's 32 now two years younger than Cavani we're playing him every single game and we need to look after him a little bit better and I think this is why I feel a little bit sorry for him we could actually do with someone like Cavani or Giroud who only plays as and when plays you know like yesterday 20 minutes to go, we need to go. Antonio's not playing well, off you come. Off you come in the 20 minutes. You start against Newcastle, we're going to put the other guy on now, give you a bit of a break. You know, Thiago Silva at Chelsea, one of the best defenders in Premier League, he doesn't play very, He doesn't play all the time. He, they pick and choose when he's going to play. Tuchel will have a look at the fixtures and say, right, I need him for that game and that game. So the ones in between, he's not playing. We need to look after him. Now again, Thiago Silva, he's got a bit on Antonio. I think he's 36 even. It's ridiculous. Um, to be playing at that level at that age but they're doing it because they're well looked after they know what their capabilities and I just I don't know maybe I'm think, overthinking it but I just look at Antonio I genuinely feel a bit sorry for him because I think he's been brilliant for us as a striker he's well overachieved as to what we needed from him but this season so what is it five goals in 20 games or something in the Premier League it's not good enough is it not for a team that wants Champions League football. That is, well, I say wants Champions League. In the running for Champions League football, it's not good enough. And we should have rectified it. We didn't. And yesterday was another game where I just ha- it just had me wishing a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. Crikey almighty. 18 minutes. Nearly 19 minutes. Apologies. Um, like I know it's a little bit of a negative video. I think it's just because yesterday... I'm a bit worried. I think I'm worried more than anything. Because Moyes is sort of picking his favourites if you like the Sufal doesn't deserve being team Antonio needs a rest and they're in the team just through default because A. Moyes won't drop him or B. there was no one to drop him for either way it's not good is it but anyway Newcastle next weekend here's the three points a big three points an important game for both teams um, I'm going to do a video this week about the Europa League well, I say Europa League but West Ham en route for European football I'm going to try and do something positive believe it or not I don't like doing grumpy videos it's just my honest opinion though maybe I'm just a grumpy old man innit anyway I'm going to disappear now um, if you're into Valentine's Day and all that stuff have a good one hope you have a good night I hope you've treated your Mr and Mrs and um, I shall catch you tomorrow so if you like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe to me around here catch you in a bit <laughs>